就坐战狼又何妨呢？美国病了，病得不轻。这是选择性、间歇性的失明和失聪，这是病，得治。These are examples of what is commonly referred to as wolf warrior diplomacy, aggressive diplomatic posturing by China's foreign ministry spokespeople. The term wolf warrior actually came from a very popular nationalist Chinese movie. That appeared a few years before the COVID, and the movie was about how a retired Chinese soldier was defending China's national interests, protecting Chinese nationals, helping locals in the African continent. And while many have been on the receiving end of this aggression, Australia has been an outsized target. China's anger at Australia's push for an inquiry. Has seen its ambassador warn of a student and tourist boycott. It's already blocked beef from four abattoirs, and tomorrow China is expected to slap an export ban on Australian barley. When COVID first happened, there was this global accusation against China for being the origin of、uh, of COVID, blaming China for the global pandemic. This is the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan virus was declared a pandemic. Their China virus. That triggered a the self-defense mechanism within the Chinese Communist Party. Now think about it: if China was eventually held responsible for COVID, what does that say about the Chinese Communist Party's legitimacy at home? And what does it say about China's legitimacy to be called a great power in the world? Later in 2020, the deputy director of the foreign ministry's information department, Zhao Lijian, even tweeted a digital art piece depicting a grinning Australian soldier slitting the throat of an Afghan boy. It is utterly outrageous, and it cannot be justified on any basis whatsoever. China sees Australia as a regional player, a regional power, but doesn't see Australia as a peer. Australia's position. Uh, a small country with mid-sized power is an easy target for China to pick off. However, Chinese diplomats were not always known to be so combative. Following Mao Zedong's chaotic and bloody Cultural Revolution, Deng Xiaoping implemented a foreign policy strategy called "Tao Guang Yang Hui," meaning "keep a low profile and bide your time." Under Deng Xiaoping, the major focus was on economic development, so the opening up reform period, really boosting China's GDP, and becoming sort of the a key player in、uh, in the world's economy as a manufacturing hub. While Deng's strategy has proven to be fruitful for China's prosperity, Chinese diplomats were sometimes mocked by the increasingly nationalistic public as being soft and docile. Chinese netizens are generally very proud of China's achievements over the last forty years, and I think you know, that wolf warrior diplomacy is simply an articulation of that pride, that assertion of China's arrival into the world. But how it resonates. With people outside of China, is a different story. But I think what people would, would notice most as a distinction between Xi and his、um, immediate three predecessor, Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, and Hu Jintao, is that Xi Jinping no longer believes that China needs to keep a low profile. We have built enough strengths, which would afford us maybe not as polite or as、uh, as as tolerant as we used to be. And the Xi Jinping was saying that collective leadership dissolve away, and those that are、um, in those small groups, those in the Politburo, have all been appointed as loyal allies of Xi Jinping, rather than as a counterpoint or providing different perspectives to Xi Jinping himself. And we see the likes of the former Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian being sort of the mouthpiece of that ambition. But now things could be changing again. Recent months have seen an apparent shift in tone in China's diplomatic policies and demeanor. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese says he had a very positive discussion with Chinese President Xi Jinping, the first meeting between the leaders of the two nations in six years. In January, Zhao Lijian, perhaps the most recognisable wolf warrior diplomat to Australians, was quietly removed from the coveted spokesperson's podium to join the Foreign Ministry's Department of Boundary and Ocean Affairs, at the margin of the ministry's power circle. After three years of wolf warrior diplomacy, two things have happened. The first one is what China's economy has suffered. Last year, China's economy had the slowest growth rate, around three percent, since 1979. 
And the second thing that has happened is that China has alienated itself from the world. Globalization is still happening. It has continued on just without China. Globalization looks increasingly like desanitization. So I think at this time, the Chinese leader have made the judgment call that China needs to reintegrate with the world. And that means that well, foreign diplomacy is not going to be the popular choice anymore. The question is, now that Zhao Lijian has been moved far away from the podium, does it mean that Xi's ambition has changed? Or are the diplomatic wolf warriors just simply laying low and biding their time? I don't think the fundamentals of China's foreign policy has changed. Certainly not under Xi Jinping, because he's still at the, you know, at the apex of foreign policy making. So I think it's sort of regroup, re-strategize. I'm taking a softer tone for now. If the conditions arise for China, to defend itself again, like it has in the past couple of years, I think Wolf Warrior Diplomacy will very possibly make a comeback.